I'd like to introduce a, a dear friend of mine. I don't remember how we met exactly, um, but uh, Danny Decker has become a dear friend of mine. Julie and I thank so much of him. Whenever we have a client asking a marketing question, Julie and I look at each other and say, Danny. Um, and so I first got Danny on the show. It's been a while when he wrote a book called Marketing Solutions Made Simple. Marketing Simplified. Marketing Simplified. Um Danny, I do remember how we met. You were standing at an expo, the Lake Norman Chamber Expo, with the book, and it was for free. And I just grabbed one. No, it wasn't, actually. I you, just you grabbed paid, it. You paid, you I grabbed still one. owe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do I still owe you for that book? No, right? no, Julie paid for it. Julie right paid there. for it? Okay. It was actually my wife that was hanging out okay. and met you guys, and then I came up, and you know, the rest is history. The so. rest is history. Yeah. And then I got you on the show, because you know, I love to invite people that write books on the air. Um, and we just hit it off, and then I actually read the book. And as I'm reading this, I'm like, this is just awesome. This is this guy literally knows what he's talking about. And because, Danny, you know me, you know that that's one of the things I try and do, right? I don't want people here just because they say they know what they're doing. I want people that I believe really know what they're doing and can really help. And your book was just phenomenal. And you're back again, number one, because Julie loves you. First and foremost, the let's first be and foremost. Yeah. Uh, but number two, um, you wrote another book, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Joe. I'm I'm excited to be here. We got another book uh, coming out. I, I wrote it with uh, this one with a co-author who's who's a business part- partner of mine, and it's it's called the Automatic Marketing Machine, and it's coming out um, April nineteenth, I believe, is when it is available on Amazon. Okay. Now I haven't read the book, but you did send me an advanced copy. I do feel special, by the way. You should. Uh, Reese, you do understand advanced copies only come to something I learned, which is the secret in the world. Do you know the number one secret in the world is media pass? Did you know that? Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you just say media, it gets you in just about anything. You know, I, I think I think that also piggybacks on on uh, your media pass of Julie, who just <laughs> who just right. apparently <laughs> steals books. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, so I haven't read it, but I love the title, Automatic Marketing Machine, because that's what we're being taught, Danny. Everything has to be some sort of membership, some sort of, of subscription, some, some way to continue to get um, ongoing revenue streams. Um, is that the, the topic of the book? I mean, where, where are we headed with this? Because the other thing I could take this, because I know you, is a lead generation machine that's continuing to generate leads for you well into the future. So kind of walk me through the premise of the book. Am I even close? Because I know you, I, I, I bring those two topics up, but I could be way off on that. No, you're, you're exactly right, Joe. So, so first and foremost... Exactly, is what he said, <laughs> Reese. So first and foremost, the, the book is, is about teaching small business owners why most of their marketing doesn't work and how they can fix it. Right, which in and of itself is is a plenty big topic, and we can yeah. have a lot of conversation about that. But honestly, it's more than that. It's deeper than that. It's it's about teaching small business owners what marketing should do for their business, like what role should their marketing play in their business, and it's about teaching them and helping them catch the vision for how much better their business can become, and frankly, how much better their life can become when they have an automatic marketing machine that's producing a steady flow of new leads, new prospects, new customers, new leads, new prospects new customers, whether they're working, whether they're at the beach, whether they're at home with their family, whatever the case may be. So, so yes, it's about fixing your marketing, but it's also about teaching small business owners the role that marketing really should be playing in their business. And, and let's be clear about this, buddy, because um, you, you even touched on this on your first, bu- first book, right? You kind of helped me understand this a little bit better. Every business should have a clear understanding of, I'm going to do this, I'm going to say this, I'm going to spend this, and I believe it's going to produce this many leads. That's exactly That's the right. the premise of what you're talking about. Well, and, and the heart, Joe, of, of the misunderstanding for most small business owners is they're, they're not clear on what exactly marketing even means. And, and Reese, I'm sure you no. see this too, right? <laughs> some, some people think that marketing just means a, a logo or a billboard or a sign, right? But ultimately, marketing, the purpose of marketing for any business is to produce a steady 
consistent, predictable flow of qualified leads, right? Like marketing exists to bring people to the front door of your business so that your sales process can turn them into customers. At the end of the day, that's what marketing is about. And when you get really clear on, on that's the purpose of marketing, and there's a lot to it, right? Branding and referrals, there's a lot that goes into it. But at the end of the day, that's how you measure the success of your marketing. And so that's that's kind of point number one we make with the book is it starts with getting clear on the definition of success. Like what does success even really look like? You have to understand that. Otherwise, you're lost. And, and and one of the things that I found really interesting about the concept, the word of marketing, my older brother got a marketing degree from Western Carolina, and he's told me many times, Joe, everything, and I do mean everything I learned in school, is obsolete. I, I mean, it, it's a whole nother world out there, right? And, and so, and this is somebody whose profession was in marketing. So more and more, we need people like you to help us redefine specifically what it is we're trying to do because content has changed and the delivery process has changed. Yeah. And so those are the things that uh, we need so much help with. Yeah. And, and Joe, one of the things we say in the book is that the, the tactics have completely changed. The media channels have completely changed. It looks very different today than it did 40 years ago. But you know what? The underlying principles are still there, right? The principles of marketing right. are the same today as they were 100 years ago, right? It starts with getting crystal clear on who are your prospects? Who do you want to attract into your business? Who do you want your customers to be? And then really getting clear on what are their pain points? What are their problems? How are you going to make their life better? And listen, 50 years ago, it was maybe the radio, direct mail, billboards, you know, whatever. And today it's Facebook. And whoa, LinkedIn. whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be beating up on the radio, man. That puts me in a bad situation. Okay. <laughs> hey, we're all here, right? The radio is... The radio is Still is, cooking, is, baby. Still cooking. Exactly. But what are we all going to do with this? We're going to take right. these clips and they're going to go out all That's over social correct. media, right? That's correct. I tell people that, that on the open airways is probably 50% of the value of the radio. The other 50% absolutely is this. So, I, uh, Danny, I, there's one thing... Um, you know what? Let, I, I'm going to go to break and we come back. I want to talk about this, Danny, because you write literally page seven of your book, which is why you got a got a got a warm spot in my heart. Your automatic marketing machine will become one of the most valuable assets of your business. That hits home for me. Because it's something I sell every day. If, if you've got a system that's guaranteed or generating leads, I can sell the dickens out of that, buddy. And so that just kind of hit home for me. And that's on page seven. So I know I'm going to like your book. I knew you'd like that. I was, I, I was specifically going to bring that up. So I'm glad you saw it. So let's true. talk about that when, when we come back, okay? So And we're back. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnone. This is WSIC, 105.9 FM, 100.7 FM, 1400 AM. And you are listening to the number one talk business show in all of the Vils. I mean, from Statesville all the way to Huntersville. And I am here uh, with Reese Arlen, he is uh, Business Marketing Solutions Group co-owner. Reese, thank you so much, buddy, for being. I appreciate it. And we are here with my good friend Danny Decker, whether he will admit it or not. Um, <laughs> and we're talking to him about his brand new book, um, Automated Marketing Machine. Am I got that right? It's the Automatic Marketing Machine. Automatic Marketing Machine. And what I want to talk about before the break. Um, you wrote in page seven, which means you after my heart, right? I, you know, I didn't even get into the book and I saw the statement which says um, your machine will become one of the most valuable assets of your business. Danny, I know you wrote that just because you wanted to please me, but that's true, buddy. Yeah. And it's, and it's a futuristic thought, right? Most small business people don't get that. They, they don't see Man, if you can create a lead generation system, that has real value for a buyer. Yeah. Well, Joe, one of the, the first lessons I learned when I was building my first business probably 10 years ago came from the book E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And, and one of the things he, he, he taught was you need to build your business as if you're going to sell it. Whether, whether you actually intend to sell it or not, you need to build a business that is sellable, which means it can work without you. And so – Obviously, that, that has a, an operational component, right? Like you have to have a business that can operate without you. But your marketing is absolutely, and I would argue, possibly the most important piece of that conversation. And, and I'm sure you can speak to this, Joe. If, if you're trying to sell a business and, uh, and there's no, no marketing um, machinery built and the entire business is 
is is is funded solely by the owner going out and networking and hustling and and you know his his blood sweat and tears is the only is the only strategy for bringing uh, new customers into the business. Well, that doesn't have a lot of value to a, a, a buyer, right? Because the buyer doesn't want to take that on. Like nobody wants that responsibility. So so building a marketing machine that that runs without the day to day involvement of the owner, I would argue, is one of the very most important things you should do as a business owner, whether or not you're going to sell your business, but especially if you are going to sell. You your know, business. it's funny you say that because in my world if the owner is doing a lot of things and they're doing them successfully they think it adds value the truth is it doesn't because i as the buyer i can't do that right i can't (laughs) if if you go to 10 networking functions a week you know what i mean and you have a wonderful charismatic personality and attract people to want to buy your product and services I can't do that. And so I can't put the value on it that you want because I cannot duplicate what you're doing. And what you're talking about, let's create a system that does create leads that can be duplicated. And that's the big difference here. Exactly. Exactly. No, I I would imagine, Joe, when you're selling a business, the the less the owner does – the more attractive the business yeah, is, sure. right? Because nobody wants wants to buy a job, and, and so marketing is ex- is exactly the same. And, and we call it the automatic marketing machine. And and what I want to communicate is that it's more than just it's not you you can't just go buy a single piece of software, right? It's not as simple as as just go buy this program and and everything's gonna you know your marketing's gonna run itself, right? It it takes time, it takes planning, it takes building a team, it takes working with vendors, it takes. It takes there, – there are a lot of, of components that go into your machine, right? But at the end of the day, that's the vision I want small business owners to have for their marketing. They're trying to build a machine that produces a steady flow of, of customers and prospects without their day-to-day attention. And and the reason why you're the perfect guy to write this book is because I know this about you. When I send you to clients, right, your job is to help them find the different components, It's not one company that's going to do everything for you for marketing. It might be four different companies doing four different pieces. This is the machine you're talking about putting together. Yeah, exactly correct. It's a combination of working with with other companies, of working with internal staff. But listen, it all starts, and I know we've got to go to a break in a second here. Maybe we can pick this up when we get back. It all starts with the strategic blueprint, right? And that's the mistake that I think most small business owners make Ah. is they just bounce – from vendor to vendor, software tool to software tool, they don't have a strategic blueprint in place, and so they never get results. You just hit on right exactly what I'm talking about. We come back. Let's take a break and we come back. You are talking with Danny Decker. He is the man. He is the marketing master. If it's Friday morning, your business matters. We'll be right back. And we are back. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Bagnone, and I am here with Danny Decker. Danny, thank you, my friend. I do appreciate it. Um... Uh, we were talking before the break, and you used the word uh, plan. Blueprint. Yeah, blueprint, strategy, and all of that stuff is so frustrating for us small business people, right? So let's dig into that um, a little bit, because I know I have sent you uh, business people and family and friends um, to help with this, because um, you do make it easier for them. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So it's it's three it's three questions that you need to answer when you're building out your marketing strategy. It's number one, who is your target market, and you need to get crystal clear on who your buyers are. And we could have a we could spend five hours talking about that, but. Number one, you have to get crystal clear on who your customers are, right? That's your market. Number two is messaging, right? What are you going to tell those people in order to get them to schedule a consultation or come to your restaurant or come to your store, whatever the case may be, right? Market, message, and then third is media. And media is just what channel are you going to use to communicate that message, right? So the channel could be Facebook, it could be the radio, it could be direct mail, it could be networking. Like there's no shortage of channels, right? Right. And there's a new one every single day, TikTok, and like there's new ones every single day. But here's the problem. Most small business owners, they just jump to that third part of the conversation. And most marketing vendors, unfortunately, just jump to the third part of that conversation, which is, well, let's talk about TikTok, or let's talk about Facebook, or let's talk about the radio, or whatever the case may be. But they do it without having had 
the first part of the conversation, which is let's get clear on who our market is and let's get clear on what our messaging is. And so when you when you insist, which is what I do and what I what we do in the book, that you start with a detailed conversation about who your target audience is, what motivates them, what problems are they facing, you know, what do they want what what outcome are they looking for in their lives, right? Until you have that conversation, you can't figure out what's the right messaging. And you know, Danny, what I find interesting is this is real simple. Know who, know the messaging, and know the media. And, Danny, I'm going to tell you something. I bet you 85, I I could even guess 90% of my clients don't know the who, the messaging, or the media, but think they do. Do you find that to be the case? Because you could spend months asking any one of these three questions individually. And that really does seem to be the question. Most of my clients don't know who their customer is because they'll tell me, oh, anybody can use this particular soap. It's wonderful. Anybody with money. Anybody with money. (laughs) And so how do you deal with that? Yeah, no, that's exactly right, Joe. Uh, Reese, if you've noticed, he said, exactly. (laughs) Yep, yep. 95% of the business owners I talk to either don't know or or think they know but they don't know right and and it, and it it takes a deep conversation and so you know one of the things if i'm working one on one with somebody you know we'll spend 4 hours just going deep into who are their customers and what is the psychology that drives their customers and and that's really the secret sauce of it you have to get into knowing your customers really well at a deep level and danny is it just me but sometimes or most of the time they can't see the forest through the trees it's like you would think they would know who their customers are but for some reason they don't yeah well and that's the challenge with with any business right is we're operating in our business day in day out like it's so familiar to us um, that we just start to forget that the rest, you know, our customers, people who aren't in our world every day, they don't understand this stuff, you know? To me, it seems to be like the squeaky wheel. Whoever is screaming the loudest to the owner, that's who the owner thinks is their customer. Right. And, usually, and that's not true. And usually it's the uh, exactly right. And right. that's usually the opposite, right? Because it's usually it's those squeaky customers that are actually the worst customers. And those are the people you need to design your marketing to keep them out, right? <laughs> because, Definitely. but honestly, Definitely. marketing is 50% who you let in. And 50% who you keep out. Oh, that's an interesting statement. Yeah, well, think about how much worse your life gets. Like, we've all had nightmare customers, right? No, (laughs) not me. I love all my customers. But when you stop and think about it, man, those nightmare customers, you could have one nightmare of a customer and nine great ones. And that one nightmare of a customer gives you all the stress, gives you all the anxiety, takes up all your time. And you'd be so much better off if you just got rid of them. Right. Right. But no business owner is comfortable doing that because they don't have a marketing system in place. So they're, they're afraid to get rid of them because they don't know who's going to come because it's right. hard to say no to a check. Right. Right. And so that's where building a marketing machine actually gives you the confidence to turn down the bad customers or not that there's anything wrong with them. They might just not be they might not be the right fit for you. Right. 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 And uh, so when you have a marketing machine that brings you a steady flow of prospects, all of a sudden you have the confidence to say, I'm not going to work with this guy. I'm not going to work with this woman because they're not the right fit. So that so the question of who also means who not. It, to, equally right, right. important. Yeah. <laughs> so so the next thing is messaging. Man, that's about content, content, content. Danny, it's something I'm learning over the years, right? Now for a guy that is probably the worst writer on the planet, right? It's up in my head, but it ain't coming out on paper any any well shape, right? Uh, Isaiah, you don't need to laugh about that, by the way. <laughs> okay. Um how do you help them get that message? Because yeah. I've learned it is very important. I mean, yeah. how you say something really makes a difference in this day and age. Yeah. And listen, it starts with understanding your customer's pain points, right? And and so I work with a lot of attorneys. And so divorce attorneys are, are a classic example, right? Where if somebody is considering a divorce attorney, it's because they're seriously considering divorce, right? And so they're having all these anxieties. What's going to happen with my kids? What's going to happen with my house? What's going to happen with my finances? What's going to happen with my pets? All these anxieties, right? And meanwhile, your average divorce attorney who, who hasn't studied this stuff, the way they're marketing themselves is they're saying, I went to this great law school. I won all these awards. It's all about them, Right. And, and what they need to be doing is they need to be focusing their messaging on the anxieties that their customers, their prospects are actually having, right? And so, listen, whether it's written content, whether it's video content, whatever the content medium is, I don't really care. Like to each their own. Some people, you're great on camera, Joe. So why would you why would you write when you're Danny as good as said, you are on what camera? What Danny really said was, "I'm handsome." That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I but, heard. That's what I heard. 
And so what really matters, though, is that you're speaking to the pain points. And it's not messaging should not be about how great you are and your experience and the awards you've won and all of that. It's about, listen, to your customers, I understand the anxiety you're going through. Like, I know what this is doing to you. I've been there. I want to help you. And I'm going to I'm going to guide you through this. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to walk you through this. And so we've only got a minute or two left, buddy. Let's go to the third one, which is media. Oh, my gosh. There are more options now that, you know, when I started years ago, I had a bunch of restaurants inside office buildings. Danny, it was real simple, buddy. I came, I used to tell people, because I I consider myself a master at marketing, right? I'd tell people, I'm going to make a flyer. And the best way to make a flyer is, what would you want to tell that person if they were standing in front of you? Danny, one of my best flyers ever was, where you're going to go when you want a sloppy Joe? Joe's place. <laughs> what you laughing at, Reese? That baby was a home run. I bet it was. I bet and it was. What, <laughs> I me- <laughs> and that where you're going to go when you want a sloppy Joe was a flyer that I printed up on a piece of paper at 2 in the morning, right? And then slid it under the door of all of the offices, right? That's that, and all I had to do was tell them, right? Now I, I use that because my media was a piece of paper in the door, right? Nowadays there are hundreds of ways to send that flyer out. How do I decide which way is best? Yeah, well, there are so many good options out there. You know, I one of the sort of blessings of of all this technology, Joe, is that it's easier to track results than it ever was before. Um, and so, you know, I, I gravitate towards tools like Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads and, and Google ads where you can really, number one, get really precise on your targeting. Like, who do you want? Like, wouldn't it be great, Joe, if instead of having to go put flyers under every single door, you knew that, well, these 20 doors, they're, they're vegan, so they're not going to buy my Sloppy Joe. Right. And these ones are, are, are kind of elitist snobs. They're not going to eat a Sloppy Joe. But, like, these people are my t- – and, and wouldn't They'll it be great? They'll buy two. And wouldn't, it be great if, <laughs> and wouldn't it be great if those were the only doors you had to – Right. To, and so – Could have saved me many, many flyers and time. And, and that's what's great about a lot of the digital channels today is you get to do that you can make those decisions and so you can really be a lot more cost effective and you can track your results a lot more clearly because you you can define exactly who you want to put your messaging in front of danny thank uh, you know as always you and i could spend all hour on we didn't let reese talk at all uh, on on this conversation happy to be here (laughs) the the thing the thing that's incredible about well both of you really is is that um first off you never said anything that that i didn't fully agree with right Um, but the second thing and what little i do know about Danny um, from our dealings with one another and knowing each other through the grapevine. Um, Danny's a master of messaging. And so um, one of the things that I, that I just happen to know about him because we have mutual connections is is the power and importance of language. You know? Right. And Danny um, is a master at it. Yeah. Danny, thank you, my friend. If they can reach you, buddy, real quick, how can I get you? Yeah, go to automaticmarketingmachine.com. Great. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, If Joe. it's Friday morning, your business matters. We'll see you next week.